All right, so this video is actually a response to my uh, anime video, programming if it was an anime. So the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I think there are some confusions in the comments about what works and what doesn't and why doesn't it work. So, and it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty understandable because like this, that video was for uh, entertainment purposes, not, <laughs> not educational. So the things that I explained, I explained it like quickly for cinematic reasons. So it's totally okay if, for example, you don't understand the Floyd algorithm, that makes perfect sense. It takes longer than 10 seconds to fully explain it. Um, all right, so why don't we just jump in and let's look at the problem again. And then we'll talk about the different methods and actually understand what's going on. All right, so first, uh, the question was finding duplicate numbers. And the key here is to remember what the constraints were, right? So the constraints are important because uh, with the constraints are super specific. And it's the whole reason why they're specific is because the algorithm would not work if it wasn't that specific. Like uh, imagine if the numbers could be one to, you know, more than N, then, uh, then that wouldn't work because it would go out of bound with the Floyd's algorithm. So I'm going I'm to make you stop here. If you haven't seen the anime video, you should just watch it. So because I'm going to skip everything that I explained in the anime video, and I'll assume that you watch it. All right. So let's go to the constraint because the constraint, we went pretty fast in the anime. But here uh, we have to think about it more clearly. So the first constraint is that you know that the length of the array is n plus 1. Right, so that's pretty important. And then we also know that the numbers are from zero, I mean one, two, to n, right? And then like we said in the anime, because of the pigeonhole property, you know that at least one of the numbers have to be duplicated. Because imagine if n was four, so then this would be five in terms of length. So you have one to put, two to put, you know, three to put, four to put, but then you have another number to put. So no matter what, you're gonna have to repeat one of the numbers because you have four numbers to choose from, but five slots. So it could be one or two, doesn't matter, All right? So then, yeah, so that's that. And then um, we have to remember that it's, we only have one duplicate number, only one duplicate. Right, so only one duplicate, so you can't have like two, two, four, four. You know, you're not allowed to get to do this, right? You're not allowed to do that. And um, and then also, not only is it one duplicate, but it could be repeated multiple times, multiple times. The reason that's important is because to prevent another trick. So one of the tricks. Some people talked about it is like, oh, why don't you just sum n times n plus one divided by two? And then this formula basically is the summation of i from i from like, I don't know, one to n, right? So the, the, the whole point here is to say like, okay, why don't I just sum the whole array? So I'm gonna sum the array. And then what I'm gonna do is like subtract like this guy right, because we know the sum, and then that's gonna give you like the duplicate number or something, right? And then, but the thing is, this doesn't work. This only works if there's only one duplicate. So then next, uh, the other thing is that time complexity, complexity should be O of N squared. Yeah, and sorry, smaller than O of N squared. Uh, the thing is, this would probably also work if it's N log N, because the Floyd's algorithm is actually O of N, but, um, but the reason why they didn't do that is because they don't want you to know that it's uh, the definitely linear time because or else it kind of gives away some hint. So they kind of give you a leeway here. But the next constraint will allow you to see that they'll still <laughs> make it harder because uh, if that's the case, we can actually just sort it, right? We can just sort it because that takes n log n, but we can't do that because there's another one. And the other one is um, the array must not be modified. Array not be modified. So your input array cannot be modified, right? But that's fine. You could still sort. Uh, you could still sort an array by like making another array, right? So that's where this comes in. Space. It has to be O of one, right? And then now it's annoying. You're like, okay, well now I definitely cannot sort 
because of these two. So in the anime, it says that time exceeded. Uh, the reason why I did that, it's actually not time exceeded. The, the problem is because um, your array is modified or the space is more than O of 1 if you want to sort them. The reason why I said in the anime that's time exceeded is because it's just funnier because I could say the joke, um, too slow bitch, right? Because I roll like too slow bitch. But um, yeah, so th th that's actually the only reason why I did it. Okay, so that's cool. So uh, so yeah, remember all of these uh, constraints because those are gonna be important. Now let's think about like the methods and think about what worked and what did not work and why. So the method number one is sort and scan, right? Sort and then scan. So the time complexity would be O of N log N and then space would be either O of one or something, right? But the issue is that array modified. So that's why it couldn't work. Mm -hmm. So, and then the method two is the hash map. So the real method should be just a set. You should just use a set. The reason why I use hash map because it sounded cooler, I could have said, because I was able to say hash map, you know, it just doesn't have the same ring if I said set, right? It just doesn't make much sense. It just doesn't sound as cool. So what you want is a hash set. And how a hash set works is that you just have a, a set and then you could put elements into it. And then for lookup, it's actually O of one for looking up. And then, uh, yeah, so you just go through the array. Imagine you have the array. And then for each element, you look at to your set to see if the number is already there. If it's not there, you put it in there. If it's already there, then you output that number because it means it's a duplicate. Yeah, so this would be O of N, that's great. Space, however, would also be O of N because the hash set, the max, uh, the, the worst case scenario would be there's all the elements in there. So the issue is not space O of one. All right, and then method three is the Floyd one. Cool. So what I want you guys to do, because now that's the, this is the important part, is that I'm gonna explain the Floyd's algorithm. And the Floyd's algorithm is, is easy to understand how to do it, but it's hard to understand why it works, right? So, the, I'm gonna be explaining more of the why, because in terms of how, you kind of saw it in the video. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. What you do is you have two pointers, right? You know, the hair and also the tortoise. You have one here and one here, right? And then one of them goes, one of them goes one by one, and then the other one goes two by two, like this, right? And then once they meet, let's say they meet here, once they meet, this is the point that they meet. I'll put it in blue. Then what you wanna do is you wanna put the pointer back here, one of them, and the other pointer back here, and then you just traverse one by one this time. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So once they travel at the same time, they will meet at the point where the cycle begins, right? So, but the question is like, why does it work? Why does it guarantee that once you do this algorithm, that they're gonna meet in the cycle, like in, in, the, in the beginning of the cycle. Why does it work? So this is basically a math problem. Um, it's just a bunch of mods and stuff like that. So right now I'm going to explain why, why. So before I explain why we have to go through, uh, we have to do some definitions uh, so that it's easier. So let's say, actually let's do some colors. Colors are important. So this is, X, this whole distance is X. X is all the nodes, like the number of nodes or like the distance before hitting the beginning of the cycle, okay? And then Y would be the distance from the beginning of the cycle to the meeting point, okay? And then we'll have Z, which is uh, I don't have enough space, but right here to here. And then Z is just the rest of the cycle, okay? And then we'll call, we'll call this whole loop L. Mm, this is kind of hard to see. Okay, what about L equals Y plus Z, right? So then this is length of cycle. Okay, 
Yeah. So length of cycle will call will be called L, which is actually Y plus Z. Okay. And then let's define another thing just to make it easier. We actually don't really need to define this, but uh, I think it might be helpful. Mm, what color should I choose? I'll just choose uh, white again. Uh, actually, no, blue, because um, because it's already blue. M equals the meeting point, right? Which is actually just equals to X plus Y, right? Because this is the X and then Y. Actually, let me color code it. It'll look cool. All right. X plus Y. Okay. So, okay. So we have all of this. And then, so yeah, so we got all these variables. And now what we want to do essentially is we want to prove that, uh, let's see, let's choose yellow. Okay. We want to prove that X mod L equals Z. What, is, what, is, what does this mean? But this would be our canonical, this, this is what we want to prove, okay? We want to prove that, okay? So we want to reach here somehow. And what does this mean? Well, when you think about it, X means this distance, right? And then L is the cycle. Right, and then Z is the is the one that's left. It's once they meet, they actually once they meet, the hair or like the other pointer will go Z's distance until until they hit the uh, the start of the cycle. So what this means essentially is, imagine if your X is a lot longer, right? X, and then you have a loop, which is uh, size L. Like imagine these are a bunch of nodes, right? So then essentially what we want to know is like, okay, imagine this is length L, this is another length L, and then at the end, this is, uh, let's say, let, let's say A, okay? This is the distance A. So X equals L plus L plus A. And then we, what we want to prove is that, imagine this is their meeting point. So then this would be Z. Okay, and then according to the algorithm, they're saying that A equals Z, right? But but what is A? How do we get A? A is basically X mod L equals, which is equals to A. And the reason why, because X equals L plus L plus A, and then you know what mod does. Mod is basically the kind of the opposite of um, division. You know, when you divide X, then you kill this L, you kill another L. This is the remainder, so then the remainder. So you're trying to prove that the remainder of X divided by L, the remainder of X divided by L is Z, because so that you can prove that, yes, once we meet here, then we know that this distance is the same as this distance for sure. And once you prove that, then that means, um, the, that's how you can prove that the algorithm works. Cool, right? All right, so now we just do the math and we try to get to the point where we can say, X mod L equals Z. I'm gonna take a break by erasing because I didn't drink water and my throat hurts. Do, 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 do. Okay, all right. Okay, let's do some math. Okay, so let's see. So we know that. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let's write it here first. Turtle distance. It's supposed to be turtis, turtoise, turtoise. Uh, I don't know how to say it. It took me so much time to to actually say the tur turtoise, tur turtis, turtoise. Anyways, I'll say turtle. The turtle distance is x plus y. That's correct, right? Because the turtle is going to be the slow one. It's going to go all the way here until until they reach a cycle, and then go a little bit more, and then they'll stop once they get to the meeting point. Okay, so. There's, on, there's also a small proof that we have to do. It's like, how do, we get, how do you guarantee that once the turtle hits the loop, that it's not gonna do a full loop before going again, right? Like, why, how, do you, how do you know that it's gonna reach to the meeting point? Like, what if it actually continues the loop and then again and again, and then you hit a meeting point? Yeah, so to try to prove that um, the turtle will never make a full cycle before the hare catches up to him, uh, you can you can do that proof yourself. Uh, it's it's pretty decent. You could just think about it, but we'll just skip that for now. And then the hare distance, 
then obviously you know that the, the hair goes faster than a turtle. It runs twice as fast. So because it's twice as fast, it's the same as doing two times x plus y, right? Okay, cool. So now uh, let's use this equation and let's, let's make a box right here. Let's make a box. This is our thinking box. Okay, so let's write it here. So then the hair distance is two times x plus y. Right? Is there another way to uh, describe um, to describe this length by like other variables? It is, right? So you know that the hair, what would what the hair would do? It would go here and then travel the loop, loop maybe multiple time as many as they want, and then it will land at the meeting point, right? So essentially, uh, what you have to travel, the hair would travel uh, m plus k times l, where k is just a number like uh, 0 to like infinity, right? k is just a constant. And what k means is that how many loops did it do before encountering the meeting point, right? And then the meeting point essentially is just uh, x plus y, because that's the meeting point, plus k times l, right? So what this is saying is that the hair traveled all the way x distance and then it does all the loops let's just say that it did k loops so then back to the beginning of the cycle and then l so in some ways you could say what well, we traveled we travel x then we cycled multiple times and then finally y to get to the meeting point cool okay so we have this okay and then the other side is x plus y okay and then what we can do is we can subtract one of these guys. So we get x plus y equals k times l. Mm -hmm, that's cool, right? And then we could bring it to the other side, k times l minus y. Let's draw this better. k times l minus y. All right, cool. Now, because they are equal to each other, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mod them. So for example, four, if four is equal to four, then four mod two is the same as four mod two, right? So we're gonna modulate them. So maybe we could, uh, I feel like I should use more colors, but okay, so X, maybe I'll use mod. Okay, well, I don't have enough space. I'm gonna use X mod L equals to uh, the equation that we have here k times l minus y mod l, right? So you know how mod works, right? So x mod l equals, and because there are many, many k's here, this is the same thing as doing l plus l plus l dot 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 l, and let's say there are k of them, minus y, right? Mod l. So all of this mod l, So then, um, yeah, so what does mod do? It just kills these L until there's a leftover. And we know Y is smaller than L because this is what Y is. It's, it's this little thing here, okay? So then we could remove all the Ls and in the end, we just get L minus Y, right? Because L, we know Y is bigger than zero and then L minus Y, that is smaller than L. So that is the remainder, right? And what is L minus Y? Well, if you look, what is L? L is essentially Y plus Z, right? So if L equals Y plus Z, then L minus Y equals Z, and we have X mod L. And then that's pretty much it, that's the proof, right? So intuitively, what this means, or what this all proof means, is that we know that once, um, once we meet at a point, then the modulo of X, this distance, is the same as y, I'm sorry, as z right here, right? So that's why the algorithm works. All right, cool. So I hope that was useful and uh, you know, hopefully you enjoyed the anime. Uh, I didn't really expect people to actually try to understand the algorithms. I thought it was just, you know, for funsies. It's kind of like watching, um, it's kind of like watching like um, medical shows, but I don't really care about the actual medical stuff. But uh, yeah. All right. Hope that was helpful. And uh, yeah, welcome to this channel.